So now, an overview of schemes for realization of specified response filters. So let me just kind of run through some ideas that we've already talked about. We've already just talked about discrete LC. We've talked about stubs, possibly connected by quarter wave section. So we've seen how we can use those things to make filters. Another way to do this is using a technique known as stepped impedance. And, for, and there's two basic forms of this, microstrip and coaxial filters. Here I'm showing you the microstrip form of stepped impedance filter. And the way this works is, here's the input, here's the output, and you have a set of transmission lines. So there's one transmission line, there's one transmission line, there's one transmission line. But you see that each section of transmission line has a different width. This has one width, this has a narrow width, this has a narrow width, this has a wide width, this has a narrow width. So the characteristic impedance of these lines is changing. So we have a Z01 here, a Z02 here, a Z03 here, and so on. And it turns out, I'm not going to show you this, but it turns out that each one of these kind of maps relatively cleanly to either a parallel or series inductance or capacitance. So this particular section looks like a series inductance. This particular section looks like a parallel capacitance. This particular section looks like a series inductance and so on. So in a microstrip stepped impedance filter, we can very easily create using just metallization on a printed circuit board, a filter which has any combination of L's and C's in it, simply by varying the width of the filter and exploiting the resulting characteristic impedance. Now you may have seen gadgets like this if you've ever worked in an RF lab. That's a coaxial filter. It has, uh, in this case, these are SMA style connectors, not necessarily required, but often seen. And what happens in these filters is they are designed with disks of material in them. So there's a disk, there's a disk, there's a disk. You can't see them because there's a cover over them. But these disks are alternating sections of ferrite and dielectric. And they create uh, the L's and C's in the topology that I just showed you here. So this is another way of creating a stepped impedance filter. And it's very convenient for these coaxial connectorized filters that you often see in labs. Yet another way you can create distributed filter structures is by the technique of coupled resonators. There are many ways to implement coupled resonator filters. One way is using a technique known as interdigital filter structures. So here's a particular example. This just happens to be one that uh, I built sometime in the past. This particular filter is this thing right here. And what you see is a capacitor here, and you see a capacitor here, and then you see these things, which are the stubs. There's one, two, three stubs in here. We connect to the stub at a specified location. One end of the stub is short-circuited, and the other stub end of the stub is just dangling there. So you see one stub like this, another stub which appears to be connected to nothing here, and then a symmetrical stub on the output here. The way this structure works is that these stubs are electromagnetically coupled to each other. So the first and second stubs talk to each other, the second and third stubs talk to each other. They're coupled electromagnetically. So this is quite analogous, in fact, to a transformer. Where in a transformer we have magnetic fields linking the coils. Here we have electromagnetic fields linking these interdigital structures. Digital in the sense of fingers, uh, digits, not in the sense of ones and zeros. And you see these in all kinds of forms, but typically they always have this kind of shape where you see there's these stubs arranged in various ways, and the arrangement gives the electromagnetic coupling that then implements the filter structure. And then one other type of filter I'd like to tell you about is the helical filter. Uh, these show up quite a bit in the VHF and UHF band. They have extraordinary selectivity, which is one reason why they, they appear uh, and continue to appear, even though they're relatively bulky. Here's an example of a helical filter on a printed circuit board. The way these are designed is they have helices, and these are just coils, and the coils are in cavities. So there's a coil in a cavity, there's a coil in a cavity, there's a coil in a cavity. Each one of these cavities has a resonance. So you can map this to a... LC circuit consisting of LC resonators. And the idea is that you can tune these resonances using these tuning screws, which change the frequency of resonance. And then 
there's the input and there's the output. So very simple idea. So here's a few other techniques. These te techniques do not use reactants or electrical resonance. Every other technique I've shown uses either explicit capacitance and inductance used to create resonance or has an electrical resonance through some electromagnetic phenomenon. But there are other ways to create behaviors which act like resonance. One of them is the quartz crystal. We already know that the quartz crystal is something that uses a mechanical resonance, not uh, sometimes referred to as a piezoelectric resonance. And here's, for example, an equivalent circuit of a possible quartz crystal. And these are favored in cases where you need very, very high Q. And that means very narrow bandwidth, of course. So if you need some response, which comes up very quickly, goes to a maximum, comes down very quickly, this is what you want. They're very terrible for creating flat band passes. But in a lot of cases, this is, in fact, what we want, not so much this. Uh, limitation is they're usually only good up to about 250 megahertz. And then we run out of the ability to create a resonance in this manner. But below 250 megahertz, crystal filters are very important. At higher frequencies, other techniques that come up, I'll list three here, surface acoustic wave, piezoelectric ceramic, and dielectric resonators. Surface acoustic wave filters use a acoustic as opposed to a mechanical resonance. It requires a little bit of explaining, but I'll just explain what the uh, outcome is. You have very high insertion loss, so it's typical for these to have on the order of 10 dB insertion loss, but they have very sharp transition regions. So these things are great for creating band passes, which look like this, where the transition regions are very sharp. But the problem is you have very high insertion loss. So these show up in uh, intermediate frequency stages, in TV receivers, and cellular receivers. So they play a role, and they're useful to know about. PZT is a type of material. It's basically work, working like a crystal, except it's based on a ceramic material. And the third approach is a dielectric resonator, which, as the word implies, is using a dielectric type material in a cavity to achieve a resonance. So these are techniques that would show up at VHF and above. Certainly not an exhaustive list, but I'm just trying to give you a taste of the different possibilities.